My name is Tom Boley. This is Hayward, Wisconsin. Hayward was once a famed fishing hotspot. Together, we are going to put Hayward back on the map as a serious fishing destination. This film is brought to you by Hayward Lake Visitors and Convention Bureau, Treeland Resorts on the Chippewa Flowage, Hayward Area Chamber of Commerce, Raymer Small Engine and Power Sports. We have finally made it out here. Um, it is only 11 a.m. too, so a nice early start. Our cameraman forgot both camera stands at home, but we are out here, we are on the Chippewa Flowage, we are walleye fishing. It is almost October right now. I, am in, I have not walleye fished out here, by the way, in a long time. So it's gonna be kind of a seek and destroy type of mission. Anyways, one two punch that I have planned today. Uh, one rod, I'm pretty much gonna have rig with a jig and a minnow at all times. Um, I'm gonna rig up another rod with my favorite search bait out here. Uh, number seven, Berkeley Flicker Shad in Fire Tiger. Those two baits right here catch oodles of walleyes all season long. Um, especially, you know, if fish, right now I'm assuming what's gonna happen is these fish are probably either on bog tops, the nicer fish. Uh, the, th the thing with the flowage is, I'm rambling right now. Anyways, the thing with the flowage is uh, you can get into a mountain of walleyes in a lot of spots and they might not be big. Um, it's notorious for producing a ton of numbers of 12, 12 inch fish or fish under 15 inches which is not a legal keeper fish. I'm gonna interrupt myself right there. Um, it's not just that this lake all it has is these big high densities of low size fish. Um, they, they typically just don't school together. It doesn't really matter what time of year. Spring is kind of the exception but generally if you're catching like 50 fish a day and they're all 12 inches uh, which would, would be the case if you're catching 50 a day. Those bigger fish are just not where you're fishing. Um, so our goal today is to hopefully tangle with some over 15 inch fish. I'm going to show you kind of how I hunt fish, um, how I set up a pattern, stuff like that, use my sonar, side imaging, stuff like that to find these fish. Um, we'll probably start out throwing a crankbait. If we find some fish, we'll go back to the jig and fish through them a little bit more thoroughly. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I really have no idea where we're gonna find them. Probably gonna fish, uh, start on the bog, bog humps in that 13 to 18 foot range, see what happens, and then maybe go shallower from there. I don't really like fishing much deeper than 20 feet unless it's really late in the fall. So that's the game plan for now. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I have no idea. Fish on, and it is small. Short, short. What a little cutie. Short. Hooked up. What do we got? Ah, was a, he's a flipper. There we go. And he's an over. Over 15 that is, I think. That was a jig and a minnow fish. We just pulled up a lot shallower than I've actually been looking all day. And uh, yeah, we got our first keeper sized fish. I'm gonna measure them to make sure. Oh yeah. Oh, hey buddy. He's a 16 incher, awesome. Fish on. Doesn't feel super big. Oh, that one was close to the boat. Gonna flip him on in. He's about the same size as Buddy we just got. Another about, I don't know, 16 and a half incher. All right, so what just happened? Well, I was fishing deep all morning. Caught some short ones, whatever, nothing impressive and uh, finally wandered up a little shallower and picked apart one of these small little stump pumps, uh, kind of on a much bigger flat. Caught a few nice fish, uh, keeper sized walleyes out here, and uh, the bite kind of dried up, you know, whether there wasn't a lot of fish there, they just moved, whatever, who knows. Um, 
what I'm doing now is looking around this same flat for that exact kind of structure. Um, I'm looking, using my side imaging to pick apart, uh, you know, to see what stumps, what's gravel, what's soft bottom, uh, stuff like that. I'm in about 10 to 7 feet of water right now, and uh, you know, I've fished this lake my whole life, but there's still areas of this lake where I don't know where certain stumps are, certain high spots are, stuff like that. And I am relying solely on uh, side imaging right now to find these little rises on this bigger flat. Um, a lot of the flowage, what you're actually fishing is a lot of these what I would call microstructures. A microstructure is a small piece of structure that's going to hold the fish on a much larger piece of structure. Uh, whether you're fishing a really big hump, you know, a, a big long tapering shoreline with a few small unique characteristics to it. Maybe it's a point, maybe it's a high spot, maybe it's gravel, maybe it's wood. Um, and the flowage, a lot of what we're fishing is wood right now. And uh, I'm basically just cruising along this flat looking for more wood, just like the stuff we just caught those fish out. All right, this is what I like to see right here. These are big stumps, one off my right, one off my left. What I'm gonna do is simply scroll over to them right here and drop a waypoint. Once I've dropped that waypoint, it's gonna appear on my screen over here where I've already marked a few other stumps out. And now I'm simply just gonna go back, sit just upwind of those stumps, cast my jig straight back to them, and we'll see what happens. Fish on. This one could be a slightly nicer. Yeah, I do believe we're gonna net this one. Oh, buddy. Definitely the nicest one so far. There we go. It's about uh, 18, 19. And that's how walleye fishing's supposed to work. That uh, chartreuse jig and a fathead, that was all it took to convince him. There we go. Saw those stumps on sonar, whip back to them real quick. That was actually the second set. The first set didn't have a single fish on it, at least not one that I caught. We're gonna throw him in the live well so we can take a picture at the end of the day and we'll turn him back after that. So the first thing I do a lot of days when I get on the water, I'll go to my hummingbird, I have a Helix 12. Um, it doesn't really matter which unit you have, you can do this on all of them. And I will set my depth range. This is something that probably seems really simple and really dumb to even be explaining. But what a depth range is, and we'll air some footage of it right here. But what a depth range is, it's basically you can highlight a range where you think the fish are gonna be. So I'm gonna start out somewhere between that 12 to 18 foot range. So let's say I set my, my highlight at 14 and two feet either side. Well that's gonna highlight 12 to 16 feet of water. Now all of a sudden, every depth in that lake that is mapped in the flowage here is gonna show up at green at between those intervals. Um, so it really helps you cut down a lot of time. It's something that subconsciously you think about and you're like, yeah, I wanna fish these depths. But basically what it does is it takes and it shows you exactly the areas you wanna fish. Fish? That is a fish. Just pulled up on this first hump and made two casts with a crankbait. And we are hooked up. This is the first one I've caught on the day in a crankbait. He's a decent walleye. Nice stocky little 16 incher. That is my absolute favorite crank out here. I've done videos on it before, but uh, that flicker shed's a killer out here. Number seven, chartreuse, or that fire tiger color. Awesome. Oh, we kind of ran into a dead spell for a little while. Uh, that second spot we were on kind of dried up. We might try it later in the day, we'll see. Scouted around a couple of other uh, shallow brush piles, gravel areas. A few short ones. Um, we're gonna make a move, we're swapping sides. And we are on the east side.
fish on. That took almost no time here. Feels decent, but. that motor off. Oh yeah. Put them on in. Decent fish there. The east side did not treat us well. But we are back in similar structures on the west side. And there's another about, oh I don't know, 17 inch fish. Nice stocky guy. We might try to catch one more if we don't. It's been an awesome day of fishing. I've caught six keeper walleyes which is twice as many as I was hoping for today. By no means is the Flowage an extremely easy lake to just walk on and start catching walleyes. Um, it does take quite a bit of sonar work some days, uh, quite a bit of scouting, bouncing around, but once you kind of find a pattern in an area where these fish kind of, you know, today my best spots have been less than 10 feet of water and a lot of brush and kind of gravel humps. And uh, once you get on a pattern like that in an area, a lot of times, you know, you're, you're on fish, you just got to work for them. On. I take it back, that won't be the last one of the day. This one feels slightly better. Oh yeah. Come on with my net here. Hey buddy. Oh yeah. Things are coming together beautifully. Spent a lot of the day driving around, not catching a lot of fish and uh, fishing way too deep most of the time. He's about a 19 inch fish. That's a beautiful way to wrap up the day right there. That jig's definitely been the ticket. You know, I've caught a few on a crankbait today. Quarter ounce, eighth ounce. Uh, eighth, I'm going less than eight feet of water. Quarter, um, kind of anything above there. Beauty, that is an awesome fish to end the day on. I like it, we're gonna get him back. So, today's takeaways, what did we learn? Well, I haven't walleye fished out here in a long time. What I learned is that the fish were not as deep as I thought. Caught all my fish in less than 12 feet of water for sure. Um, fish in wood, either busted up bog on the bottom, stumps, or just brush. Um, that's where every single one of my fish came from. Caught a few fish on a crankbait. Most of the fish came on a jig. I think that's actually a 3 16 ounce jig. You guys are probably like, oh my gosh, that red hook, you gotta have a red hook. I've never actually, I don't even know if I even own another jig with a red hook, honestly. Um, color doesn't really matter that much on that front. Um, but I do have to get out of here. It's been an awesome day of walleye fishing. The chip gets kind of a weird bad rap about walleye fishing in the midsummer. Guys don't like to fish here. Um, just I think because of the number of short fish and the amount of work it takes to get on a good pattern. But if I can do it in one day, you guys can absolutely do it in a weekend of fishing here or probably four hours of fishing here. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. Also, if you haven't already, watch this video, this video, and this video, and subscribe to this channel.